Ahoy there, deep divers. Ready to set sail on another adventure with us? Always ready to dive in. Today, we're plunging head first into the world of mega cruise ships. Oh, those floating behemoths, huh? Exactly. We've got a whole stack of first-hand accounts from passengers who've braved the likes of Wonder of the Seas, Utopia of the Seas. Don't forget the Sun Princess. Ah, yes, the Sun Princess. Can't leave that one out. We're talking the creme de la creme, the floating cities of the sea. But you know us, right? Always digging deeper. You got it. We're here to cut through those glossy brochures. You know the ones? Oh, I know them. All sunshine and cocktails. Exactly. We're bringing you the real deal. What surprised folks, what disappointed them, and what you, our savvy listeners, should really know before booking your own mega ship adventure. Because let's face it, these ships are an experience unto themselves. No kidding. And yeah. one thing that pops up again and again in these reviews is, well, the sheer number of people. It's one thing to see a capacity number on a website, right? But it's a whole other reality when you're actually there trying to navigate those crowded decks, the restaurants. Yeah, overcrowded definitely seems to be the recurring theme here. We've got Dan and Julie saying they couldn't even hear the announcements over the, well, the din of the crowd. Oh, I can imagine. And then we've got Rick and Dottie. They described the buffet. The buffet, the heart of any cruise. Right. They said it was like a constant dodging of hungry people. Not exactly the relaxing image you conjure up when you think cruise vacation. Not at all. And it's not just about personal space either, right? When you've got thousands of passengers crammed into this, well, essentially a floating city. It impacts everything. The service, wait times, the whole vibe. Absolutely. Imagine waiting an hour for a game of ping pong. Ooh, that's rough. That's exactly what happened to Mike, a first-time cruiser. Poor guy. Probably yeah. thought he'd be relaxing by the pool. And then we've got seasoned cruisers, Wayne and Kathy. They went as far as comparing it to... Oh, don't tell me. Disneyland on a busy day. You nailed it. An overcrowded Disney park. And, you know, it makes you think, if you're spending your precious vacation time waiting in lines, are you really getting your money's worth? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Is bigger always better? These reviews definitely suggest maybe there's a tipping point where the sheer scale of the ship starts to work against the enjoyment. Yeah, it's a delicate balance for sure. And speaking of crowds, one place they really impact the experience is, you guessed it, the dining. Ah, the food, where the reviews get really interesting. You said it. Some folks are raving about the variety while others are, well, let's just say, less than impressed. Especially on the newer ships, it seems. Right. Which is kind of surprising, wouldn't you think? You'd think the newest ships would have the most, you know, dialed-in dining experience. Exactly. But think about it. When you're serving thousands of passengers across multiple dining options... The logistics must be mind-boggling. It's a culinary feat, no doubt. But we've got Leslie, who considers herself a veteran cruiser. Oh, she knows her cruise food. She was actually appalled by the food on Utopia of the Seas. No way! She found the main dining room options bland, the desserts dry. Dry desserts on a cruise ship? That's a tragedy. She even compared the Windjammer, which is Royal Caribbean's buffet, to, get this, a high school cafeteria. Ouch. That's a harsh review. But then you have folks like Rick and Dottie who thought the food, especially the buffet, was pretty excellent. It's this inconsistency that really makes you wonder. Right. What's the deal here? Is it just personal taste or is there something more at play? Yeah, like other staffing issues, supply chain challenges, you know, those kinds of things. Or maybe pressure to keep costs down on these mega ships. Who knows? Because let's face it, feeding that many people, maintaining quality, it can't be easy. It's a massive operation. And it almost makes you wonder if they're prioritizing quantity over quality when it comes to the food. A valid point. And it's not just about the food itself, right? It's about the whole dining experience. Exactly. With so many people on board, can they really offer that personalized service you might find on a smaller ship? Now that's something to think about. Okay, so we've got crowds, inconsistent food. What else could there be? Oh, just wait, there's more. But before we get to that, let's talk about entertainment. Oh, yes. The shows, the activities, the nonstop fun. These mega ships, they really go all out, right? Mm -hmm. Broadway style shows, incredible productions. But are they worth battling the crowds for? That's the trade off, isn't it? Do you want the spectacle of those big shows? Or would you rather go for something smaller, more intimate? Maybe something unique to the specific ship or itinerary even. Right. It really comes down to what you prioritize in your cruise experience. Do you value that wow factor? Or are you looking for something a little more low-key, more authentic? 
For some people, it's all about those big productions. But for others, it might be about finding a quiet corner to read a book or enjoying a cocktail with a stunning ocean view. And I guess that's the beauty of cruising. There's something for everyone. But we've got some interesting perspectives from our reviewers here. Rick and Dottie said they never had trouble finding seats for the shows. That's good to hear. But Leslie, who's been on over 20 cruises. Wow, a seasoned pro? She was deeply disappointed with the shows on Utopia of the Seas, comparing them to over-glammed karaoke. Oh, that's got to sting. Especially for someone who's been on so many cruises. And it makes you think, are these mega ships trying so hard to up the ante with their entertainment that they're missing the mark? It's hard to say without seeing the shows ourselves, but it's a good reminder that entertainment is subjective, right? What one person finds spectacular, another might find cheesy or overblown. Absolutely, to each their own. But let's be real, there's one thing that's not subjective on a cruise. Hit me with it. The bottom line. Ah, yes, the cost. Can't escape that, can we? And from these reviews, it's becoming clear that the cost of a mega ship cruise, well, it goes way beyond that initial fare. The dreaded nickel and diming. You said it. Mike, who thought he was covered with a drink package, still had to shell out extra for a decent glass of wine. Oh no, not the wine. And Wayne and Kathy were hit with charges for bottled water and, get this, extra daily service fees beyond their tips. Seriously, you can't even escape the upcharges on vacation. Apparently not. It makes you wonder, are those base fares intentionally low just to lure people in? Like a bait and a switch? Exactly. Mm. And is this becoming the norm across the industry, especially on these mega ships? It's a trend we're seeing more and more of, that's for sure. And it's something potential cruisers need to be aware of. So how can you protect yourself? How do you avoid those surprise costs and keep your cruise budget from, well, going overboard? The key is research, my friend. Don't just rely on the advertised price. Dig into the fine print. Read those reviews. Get the real scoop, right? Exactly. Figure out what the real cost of the cruise is likely to be, because those extra charges can really add up. Great advice. Now let's talk about something that really surprised me, this new ship disappointment. Oh, you mean the shiny new ships that don't quite live up to the hype? Exactly. We've got several reviewers who are less than impressed with the newer vessels, despite all the fanfare surrounding them. Mm -hmm. It's kind of counterintuitive, wouldn't you say? You'd think the newest ships would be the most impressive, but that's not always the case. Kevin and Jackie's review of the Sun Princess is a real eye-opener. Oh, what happened there? They were shocked by the poor build quality. Really? Rust, broken glass panels. You're kidding? Even a condemned top-deck playground. Not exactly the pristine, luxurious experience you'd expect from a brand new ship. That's wild. Makes you wonder if those shipyards are struggling to keep up with the demand for these mega ships. Maybe they're cutting corners, who knows? Could be, maybe they're rushing to launch these ships and sacrificing quality in the process. And it's not just the physical stuff either. Kevin and Jackie also paid extra for a cabana mini suite with a private hot tub. Sounds fancy. It was, but it was closed after 5p meter. What? Seriously. No kidding. What's the point of a private hot tub if you can't use it when you want to? Right, like during prime relaxation time, it's almost like they're prioritizing those flashy features over functionality and actual passenger experience. Like they're so focused on having the latest and greatest that they're overlooking the basics. Exactly. And that can lead to some real disappointment. Okay, so we've got crowds, inconsistent food, questionable entertainment, nickel and diming, and now new ship disappointment. <laughs> it's starting to feel like a mega ship reality check. It definitely is. But before we get too down on mega ships, let's not forget they do offer a la lao. Oh, they do. The sheer variety of activities and amenities is mind boggling. You're not kidding. They've got everything from those Broadway style shows we talked about to water parks, zip lines, even robot bartenders. Robot bartenders. Now that's something I got to see. I know, right? How do those even work? Well, basically, these robotic arms are programmed to mix and serve all sorts of cocktails. They can even customize drinks based on your preferences. That's incredible. Like having your own personal mixologist. But as cool as all those bells and whistles are, it makes you wonder. If they're coming at the expense of something else. Exactly. Are we sacrificing quality and authenticity for novelty and spectacle? Are these mega ships becoming too big, too impersonal, too focused on technology over genuine human interaction? Those are some big questions. Mm. And they lead us to another potential pitfall of these mega ships. Mm. System glitches and, uh, oh, customer service woes. Remember Kevin and Jackie? 
our Sun Princess adventurers? Oh no. Don't tell me. More trouble in paradise. Their experience with a system error wiping out their prepaid bookings, it's a cautionary tale. System errors, the bane of modern travel. Tell me about it. They had to rebuy all their bookings because of this error, and then they faced hours-long wait times for customer service. Mm, the worst. And not in some comfy lounge, either. Where were they? A sweltering hallway with broken AC. Oh, no, that's adding insult to injury. And get this, 15 days later, they still hadn't received their refund. That's outrageous. It makes you wonder what kind of support you can really expect on these mega ships when something goes wrong. Right. Like, are they just overwhelmed by the sheer volume of passengers they're dealing with? Maybe they just aren't equipped to handle these kinds of issues efficiently. It's possible. Yeah. And it's something to keep in mind when choosing a cruise. Do you feel comfortable potentially facing these kinds of challenges? Or would you rather opt for a smaller ship where the crew might be more, you know, attentive and responsive? That's a great question to consider. So far, we've uncovered a lot of potential downsides to these mega ships. But to be fair, there are also some compelling reasons why people choose them. Stay tuned as we explore those in the next part of our deep dive. Welcome back, deep divers. Hope you're ready for more mega ship mayhem or uh, maybe magic. You got it. Now, we've been unpacking some of the downsides, you know, those crowded decks, the long lines. The questionable food experiences. Yeah, all that. But let's let's flip the script for a second. Time for some positivity. You got it. What about the allure, the the excitement? What is it that draws so many people to these these floating behemoths? Because there's got to be a reason, right? Absolutely. These mega ships, they're popular for a reason. And it's not just the marketing hype. Oh, no. It goes beyond the brochures. For sure. They really do offer a mind-boggling array of, of activities, amenities, things you wouldn't find on land, even on smaller ships. It's like they've crammed an entire city's worth of entertainment onto one ship. Right. We're talking Broadway-style shows, ice skating rinks, water parks, zip lines, surfing simulators. I mean, come on. I know. And remember those robot bartenders we were talking about? Still can't get over that. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. It really is. And I think that's part of the appeal for some people, right? Oh, absolutely. That feeling of being on the cutting edge, experiencing the latest and greatest. The novelty, the technology, it's all there. But the question for you is, is that enough? I mean, does the sheer quantity and, and the novelty of it all, does it outweigh the potential downsides? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And I think it really boils down to personal preferences and priorities. If you're someone who thrives on on constant stimulation, nonstop activity. If you want to be entertained 24-7. Exactly. Then a mega ship might be right up your alley. It's like stepping into a, a floating resort, you know? Endless options at your fingertips. But what if you're looking for something a little different, a more uh, relaxed experience? A chance to actually unwind, disconnect. Yeah. To savor the moments, connect with the sea, maybe even find some peace and quiet. Is that even possible on a mega ship? It's a good question. And honestly, it might not be. If that's what you're after, a smaller vessel might be a better fit. Where you can really escape the crowds, have some space to breathe. Exactly. It's about finding the right match for your travel style. Totally. And even within the world of mega ships, there's a spectrum, right? Yeah. Some lines cater to families. Others are more adult focused. Some are all about adventure and thrills. Others are more about luxury and pampering. So even if you're set on a mega ship, it's crucial to do your research. Choose one that aligns with, with your interests, your expectations. Don't just go for the biggest or the newest, right? Exactly. Because those glossy brochures, they don't always tell the whole story. Yeah. And that's where those firsthand accounts, those reviews, become so valuable. Hearing about the actual experiences of other passengers, it can give you a much more realistic picture of what to expect. The good, the bad, and everything in between. <laughs> so as we as we delve deeper into this world of mega ships, it's... It's becoming clear that there's no easy answer, is there? To the question of whether they're good or bad? No, not really. It's more nuanced than that. It's about understanding the trade-offs, right? Weighing the pros and cons and ultimately making an informed decision based on, on your own needs and desires. And I think that's, that's the most important takeaway here. It's your vacation. It's your experience. Don't let anyone tell you what kind of cruise you should or shouldn't enjoy. Find what speaks to you. That's it. Empower yourself with information, do your research, and choose the cruise that that fits your travel style, your personality. Love it. But, you know, let's not forget the bigger picture here. 
these mega ships, they're more than just vacation vessels, right? Oh, absolutely. They're part of a larger trend in the industry, one that raises some important questions. Uh, about sustainability, mm. the future of travel. Right. We're becoming more and more aware of our environmental impact, and these massive ships, they consume a lot of fuel, generate a lot of waste. They can impact those delicate marine ecosystems. It's something we can't ignore. And it's not just the environment either. There are social and economic considerations too. How do these mega ships affect the ports they visit? Do they benefit the local communities or do they contribute to overcrowding and strain on resources? These are important questions. Complex issues with, with no easy answers. Yeah. But it's a conversation we need to have as, as the industry continues to grow and evolve. We need to be mindful of the impact, not just for ourselves, but for the planet, for the communities we visit. So while we're weighing the pros and cons of mega ships for individual travelers, let's also keep those broader implications in mind. It's about responsible travel, making choices that benefit both ourselves and the world around us. And maybe that's where the true value of this, this deep dive lies. It's not about telling you what to do. It's about, about giving you the knowledge, encouraging you to think critically about your choices. To be informed travelers, to ask the tough questions, and to, to make decisions that align with our values. Okay, and speaking of tough questions, let's, let's revisit those system glitches, those customer service issues. Oh, yeah. Kevin and Jackie's experience with the Sun Princess. is pretty alarming. Eh, Makes yeah. you wonder how, how widespread these problems really are. It's definitely a valid concern, and it really highlights how important it is to be prepared, to know your rights as a passenger. So what can people do to protect themselves? If something goes wrong, should they be documenting everything? Taking photos, keeping records? Yes, absolutely. Documentation is key. Keep copies of all your bookings, receipts, any communication with the cruise line. And don't be afraid to speak up. Exactly. Advocate for yourself. If you encounter a problem, don't just let it slide. And familiarize yourself with the cruise line's terms and conditions. They usually outline the procedures for handling complaints, seeking refunds, and social media can be a powerful tool. Right? Oh, absolutely. Sharing your experience online can sometimes get the attention of the cruise line, lead to a faster resolution. It's like even on vacation, you got to be a savvy consumer. It's true. Gone are the days of just blindly trusting the cruise line to take care of everything. You got to be proactive, look out for yourself. So we've talked about the downsides of these mega ships. We've acknowledged they offer some pretty appealing features. We've looked at the bigger picture. The impact on the environment, the economy. But there's one more aspect we need to touch on. What's that? The emotional side of the cruise experience. Ah, the feels. Exactly. With all the crowds, all the complexities, are these mega ships really capable of delivering that, that true cruise magic. That sense of escape, relaxation, connection. Or are they sacrificing something essential in their quest for, for bigger, bolder, more extravagant experiences? It's a question each traveler needs to answer for themselves. What do you value most in a vacation? That's what matters. So as we wrap up this part of our deep dive, let's shift the focus back to you, our listener. What are your hopes and dreams for your next cruise? What kind of experience are you seeking? What truly matters to you when it comes to creating lasting memories, finding that joy, that rejuvenation? Keep those questions in mind as we continue our exploration in the final part of our deep dive. Okay, deep divers, we've, we've journeyed through those bustling crowds, taken in the dazzling shows, um, hit those all-you-can-eat buffets. Even encountered a robot bartender or two. Oh, yeah. Can't forget those. But as we wrap up our mega ship deep dive, let's, let's get real for a minute. Time for some truth-telling. Knowing what we know now, would you, would you actually choose a mega ship for your vacation? It really is the ultimate question, isn't it? After all the, the pros and cons, the, the good, the bad, the, the sometimes just plain baffling. Yeah. What matters most to you? As a traveler, as someone seeking that that perfect getaway. Exactly. Do you do you crave that nonstop energy, that feeling of like a thousand things happening around you at any given moment? Or do you yearn for a slower pace, you know, a chance to just savor the moments, connect with the sea, maybe even find a little a little peace and quiet? Right. I mean, some people, they thrive on that constant stimulation. Oh, absolutely. They want optimals. They want excitement. They want to be entertained 24-7. And hey, a mega ship delivers that, right? Oh, for sure. It's like a, a floating city of entertainment right at your fingertips. But for others, that might feel, I don't know, overwhelming. Maybe even a little a little suffocating. Yeah. And then there's the, the convenience factor, right? Mega ships, they have it all, don't they? Oh, they do. Gourmet dining, 
Broadway shows, you name it. Even that robot mixing you the the perfect cocktail. I know it's crazy. <laughs> but do you value that that convenience over over a more personalized experience? You know, where the staff knows your name, where you have space to to truly unwind, to escape the crowds. And and let's not forget about the the budget. Remember all those extra charges. Those those can really add up. Oh, they can sneak up on you. So would you rather, you know, splurge on that upfront fare? knowing most things are covered mm -hmm. or are you are you okay with navigating those those a la carte costs potentially ending up spending more than you planned it's a tough call isn't it and it really highlights how important it is to to really define what what your ideal cruise experience looks like to know what you're willing to spend what you absolutely can't live without what you're willing to to compromise on because no vacation is perfect right? no definitely not but by going in with with realistic expectations a clear understanding of of what you're looking for you're more likely to find that that sweet spot you know mm. the cruise that leaves you feeling refreshed rejuvenated not stressed and and nickel and dime exactly and speaking of expectations remember those reviews about new ship disappointment oh yeah the the shiny new ships that don't quite live up to the hype. It's a good reminder that bigger and newer doesn't always mean mean better. Sometimes those those classic ships and those have been around a while, they might actually offer a, a more refined and more enjoyable experience. It's true. They've had time to to work out the kinks, to perfect their their service, their offerings. And we got that that seasoned charm, you know. Like a, a well worn pair of jeans, comfortable, familiar, full of full of memories. I love that analogy. It really brings us back to to what we were talking about earlier, you know, about what truly makes a cruise special. Is it the the dazzling amenities, the endless activities, or is it something something deeper? Something more fundamental. Exactly. As these ships get bigger and bolder and more more extravagant, are they are they losing sight of that that core cruise experience, that sense of of escape, of adventure, of connection? You know, connection with the sea, with the people ah. you're traveling with. It's a a question worth pondering. It is as you plan your next getaway. Because at the end of the day, the, the best cruise is the one that aligns with, with your values, your budget, and most importantly, your heart. So whether you're dreaming of a, a mega ship adventure or a, a more intimate sailing, we hope this deep dive has given you the, the insights you need to, to chart your course. To set sail with confidence. To find that perfect cruise experience that, that truly speaks to you. Happy cruising, everyone! <laughs>